Okay, so this problem, problem number 17, I don't even want to go and tell you how much frustration has been going on in the video you're about to watch, assuming I get it right this time. I spent about two hours trying to film this one problem because I kept making little small silly calculation errors. And then finally I got the perfect video and realized, hey, wasn't there something about a solar panel? I left out a sentence. So here we are, let's hope it goes right this time. An architect is building a structure that will place vertical pillars at the vertices of regular hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F. This is not part of the original problem. I wanted to have something up there because part of the problem I was having was the drawing was getting messed up because I was trying to do it live on the video. So uh, hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F, which is lying horizontally on the ground. Um, so I just set up a regular hexagon like this just to get an idea. It's not really regular looking, but don't worry. I was trying to kind of do a perspective drawing. So you're looking back in this way. The six pillars will hold up a flat solar panel that will not be parallel to the ground. Uh, the heights of the pillars at A, B, and C are 12, 9, and 10 meters respectively. So 12 at A. So what I did is I was like, okay, well, B is at nine. Okay, we got B here. C is the one a little bit higher. A is a little bit up here. And it's supposed to rise up. Let's give it a, take it away from this. It rises up to here, rises up to there. So I was kind of get an idea of what's going on. It's basically a planar surface, right? It's a solar panel. We've seen solar panels before, right? And it's going to be angled. And because A is higher, it's kind of angling on my original drawing up this way. Now, a flat surface, a planar surface is a plane and you're in three dimensions, which means we're going to three-dimensional graphing. And so I'm gonna show you briefly what a three-dimensional graph looks like, and then I'm gonna pause the video and draw what I use in the paper to solve the rest of the way. So here it goes. This is the positive Z axis. This, you draw what looks like the first quadrant, but it's not the first quadrant, right? That's Z, this is positive Y. To get the x-axis, this is a, a 270, split it at 135. So you'll come out, I'm just kind of, sorry to block the camera for a second, I just gonna make sure I get it accurate. X will be here, negative z is down here, negative x is down here, negative y is over here. And what you get in 3D graphing is called octants, and the, the plane in what you're gonna use, well, at least what I use in my solution, maybe the really super genius kids who are going for DHR found a slicker way than I did to get this one, but man, it was really a pain. Uh, it took a lot of time for me too. So AX plus BY plus CZ is equal to D. That's the equation we're gonna use. I'm gonna go ahead really quickly and draw what I use to draw the rest of the way to calculate my equations for this. We'll be right back after I draw it. Okay, so to continue on, I'm trying to draw what I drew here on my paper. And so it's going to look like this. I'm going to explain a little bit about it. In fact, the one on the paper is a little bit better because it's not with marker. Um, but let's try to get to it. One of the mistakes I made when solving is that I thought the letter after A going this way would be E. And actually F was in between. That's why the paper's a little crumpled. Uh, anyhow, so... <laughs> Uh, let's get to explain this and what's going on. So I put B at the origin right here. And I called the point that was at where the solar panel was B prime, okay? So B prime would be located, you have your coordinates are X comma Y comma Z, and they're actually uh, ordered triples, okay? So the first value X is zero, because you understand all these lines are meeting perpendicular. So there's zero at the origin, zero for Y, zero for Z. You're gonna go straight up. Why did I pick B to be the origin? Um, I picked B to be the origin because it was the middle letter of A, B, and C that we had. And so from there, I have a 90 degree angle with the X, Y axis. You're going straight out this way. Now, I put C here. Originally, I called the distance D. Now, why did I call it D? Because we don't know what it is. The problem doesn't tell us. So I just put D as a placeholder. I know I can modify it. Now, when did I change it? That's the Y value, by the way, because you're traveling along the Y axis. The X value doesn't change on the Y axis. And then you're gonna go up uh, to the value of 10, the Z value when you get to that height. 
Okay, so you got 10, 0, 2D, 10. Okay, I changed it to 2D. Why did I change it to 2D though? Well, you'll see. If I had just called it D, understand that the length of this segment right here, AB, would also be D. And the angle for a regular hexagon in the interior is 120 degrees. Um, if that, we don't know that, you're going to be way far behind in this problem. You should be able to calculate the interior angle of a regular n-gon. You can watch a Khan Academy video to figure out how if you want. I'm not going to explain that part right now. This problem is way too complicated to explain basics. So if this was your first time taking it, I hope this was a skip for you. It was a doozy. So 90 here, this was 30 here, okay? Because 90 plus 30 makes the 120. That's the angle that you're getting in the regular hexagon, uh, like this is 120, right? So C, B, A. So as you go around C, B, A, you're getting 120 there. Well, then this would be 30. And if I came from that A and I came back perpendicular to the X axis, right? Then that's a 30, 60, 90. And because it's a 30, 60, 90, that's going to allow me to say, all right, well, if this is D, then half of it would be D over two. I don't like fractions. That's when it became 2D. And eventually I just said, why am I giving it a letter at all? That's tedious and it takes up time. They didn't give us any lengths and I'm going to assume it probably doesn't matter. So I just stuck with two after that. I'm trying to teach you the evolution of thought that I had that got me to where I got the solution for this problem. So um, zero to 10 became this point now at C prime. B prime is zero, zero, nine. A prime then, how do I know the X value is root three? Again, this is a distance of one because the AB was two. Opposite 60 is your distance on the X axis. That distance is root three. Why is Y negative one? Well, this is one. Yeah, but how do I know that's the distance on this Y axis? Well, because it's 90 degrees here and 90 degrees here, from A to the X axis and the Y axis are actually perpendicular, or a parallel rather. So they're both perpendicular, two lines perpendicular to the same line in a plane are parallel. And because of that, the distance from A to my BF line or the X axis, that distance is also the distance on the Y axis, regardless of how it looks, right? Think conceptually because it's really hard to draw on 3D on a 2D surface or 1D, 2D surface, yeah. So it's negative one because this is one and you're going this way on the y-axis, the negative part of the y-axis. Okay, from there, uh, you had root three here. I made another 60 degree angle here for a total of 120. That gave us F right back on the x-axis again. And since this is root three and this is root three, the x-coordinate here is actually two root three and the y coordinate is zero and the z coordinate is zero. This is not f prime, it's on the base, not on the solar panel part. So next up we went to e and again, like I said, when I was solving on my timed solve, I called this e for a while and it got a little frustrating there. Even I can get frustrated, I try not to, but man, this problem was something else. So eventually I figured out that it's not e, it's f at the end and so I had to come in one more e. Again, this angle right here is still 30 degrees because 90, 60, 30. And so I needed to go 90 degrees away, which means FE will be parallel to the Y axis. That means the length of FE, which is the length of the side of the original hexagon is going to be your Y value of E prime because E prime comes straight off the plane. It does not affect the X and Y values once you go straight up. So let's erase a little bit here and write what E prime became at that point. What's the X value? The same as the F value because you're perpendicular to the X axis. You're not changing your X value. These are really hard insights to grasp unless you've done 3D graphing at some point in your life. So two root three is the X value here. Next, we have the Y value, which as we said, is the length of the side of the regular hexagon. And we called that two, just like it is up here. Now, what is the, the height E prime? That's what we're looking for. What is the height in meters of the pillar at E? We're not gonna know, call it Z. Okay, we've got all of our points. We've got an equation right here. Now we're gonna plug in and see what we can find out. Why are we plugging in? Because we don't know what else to do. 
right? So you just keep going, peeling back layers, and eventually, after a long while, the problem falls apart. So uh, we're gonna plug in first 009 because it's got two zeros, and I like zeros when we're plugging in. Again, these are X, Y, and Z, not A, B, and C. Be very careful as I go through this. So it's zero plus zero plus nine C equals D. So that's our first equation, nine C equals D. All right, now I'm gonna go over to C prime and plug it in. X will be zero, making the A ignored. I've got two B plus 10 C. 2b plus 10c equals d. You're gonna have a lot of intuition that gets you farther in this problem. What I did next was I subtracted the top equation from this equation. So I've got this one, this is significant conclusion. The next significant conclusion was this minus that. It gives me you, I'm gonna write it here first, 2b plus c equals zero. That allows you to solve for b, because you kind of sense, well, if this has d in terms of c, maybe I should put b in terms of c. Again, intuition kind of kicks in from experience from solving many type of these problems. So 2b, you're gonna get b equals negative c over two, the second significant conclusion. Next, we go to a prime. We're gonna plug a prime into our plane equation. You might not know it again, this is the equation of a plane. Just like, it's like similar to like a standard form or whatever in um, linear functions, okay? But it's instead, it's a planar function. When do you graph planes? Uh, maybe pre-calc, pre if not, like I said, I think I mentioned it earlier, you do it in the third semester of calculus when you're at university, um, when you're doing derivatives of 3D curves and shapes and stuff like that. So um, let's keep going then. Uh, all right, where are we at? This point here, root three is the X value. So I've got root three A or A root three and then b is negative one, so it's negative, I'm sorry, y is negative one, so it's negative b, and then the c, the z value is 12, so it's plus 12c equals d, and we already know what d is, and I got a feeling at this point that I probably want it in terms of c, that way I can replace the b in terms of c, negative, negative, double negative means it's gonna come out positive, so you'll have a root three plus c over two. I'm replacing b, the negative cancels the negative, c over two takes its place. I'm gonna move the nine c over to get plus three c equals zero. I'm gonna multiply by two. There's a lot of calculations in this problem. Two a root three plus c plus six c equals zero. So I've got seven c, I'm gonna move it over and divide by two root Three, and I'm going to get the third significant conclusion. A is equal to negative seven over two root three C. And the reason it took so long to film this is I kept making little errors while trying to explain it because I'm not looking at my paper. I'm kind of just doing it and trying to explain it to you at the same time. And just, man, there's so many little things you have to calculate. So uh, next up, we've got one more point to go. It's this point E prime. And we're gonna plug E prime in. Again, A is two root three. So I've got two root three A. And then, you know, I probably, now that I think about it, I probably could have kept this two root three here and just solved it for negative seven C. That would have been smart. But the things you notice later, right? So uh, two root three A, and then what's B's value? B is gonna be, Y is gonna be two, so I'm gonna have plus two B. Instead of putting the capital B though, I'm gonna put negative C over two. So I put negative C over two, the twos cancel, okay? Then what? I've got CZ, that doesn't change. Why? Because the Z value is just Z again. We're looking for Z. C, we don't know what it is. Everything else is in terms of C. And then D is nine C. Okay, great. So now we got our plane equation. I still have this a here, but earlier I had 2a root 3 equals negative 7c if I had just solved for that, but I didn't know that at the time. So if you plug this in to the a, um, the two root 3s cancel and you still get negative 7c. So now you're going to have negative 7c minus c plus cz equals 9c. All right, that means all of these, the C is gonna go away if you can't tell. Everything's got a C, so you can just divide by C and it's gone, poof. So I've got negative eight C though. I'm gonna move it over here to become 17 C. 
and I'm gonna have CZ equals 17C divide by C. You finally get 17. And man, I'm glad to be done filming this problem. Let's get on to problem 18.